Welcome back to graphing rational functions. Um, so in this last section, we're going to do an example, another example where we have to graph a new function. Uh, this particular function, uh, of course, g of x is just another way of saying it's a function. This is g of x equals negative 2 over x minus 3. Okay, so with any graph, with any function uh, in algebra, whatever, you can always plot x points, x values, and then get corresponding y values. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you that we can input something in for x and we can get a corresponding y value. Okay, so this is going to be my work area right here. So just so you're aware. Now, the first thing we can input, this is just an example. You can pick anything you want for your x inputs. Okay. I just like to have a nice little selection, so I pick these values. And after I'm done with them, I might realize that I need a few more so I can get a better idea of what this graph does. Okay, So but let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to put g of negative 3. Okay, And uh, what values do I get when you input negative 3? So let me put an equal sign right here. This would be my second work area. And I get negative 2 over negative 3 minus negative 3 is negative 6. Let me simplify it further. I get positive 1 third. Okay, so I get positive 1 third. I'm going to do that in blue. 1 third. Now I need to go over here to my graph. Let's make 3, 2, 1. A little not equidistant. It's a bothersome. There we go. That's better. 1, 2, 3. Nice. I just have negative 3 to positive 3, but I probably will have to add more later. 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2, 3, and we'll see what that does for us, okay? So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to plot the, the graph, negative 3, 1 third, in green, and that's about there. Let's do negative 2 now. So I'm going to erase my work, and I'm just going to plug in negative 2. What values can you put in for x? You can put in anything. So I'm just choosing to do this nice selection of problems, okay? So then I'm gonna do negative two over negative five, which ends up being positive two fifths because we have a negative divided by negative. Now, is negative is two over five bigger than one over three? The answer is yes, it is. Uh, the decimal form of one third is 0.33 repeating. Two over five is 0.4, so it is a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna go up just a tiny tiny bit about there I know it's not exact but we're just trying to get the idea of what this looks like let's do negative 1 next okay my tops gonna stay the same uh, reduce might be a little bit different so let's plug in negative 1 negative 1 oops forgot my minus 3 minus 3 and what do I get I get negative 2 over negative 4 I end up getting a positive 1 over 2 simplified. And this again is a little bit bigger, so we're going to graph this up just a little bit more. Okay, I know it's not precise, but you're getting the idea. Okay, so now I'm going to put a negative 1 half in. And actually, looking at this, I'm noticing that that's not going to help me out a lot. In my first problem, using negative 1 half would be helpful. But in this one, negative 1 half is not going to be helpful. So I'm going to change this negative half. I'm going to change some of these values, and we're going to do something different. The reason why we chose uh, negative 1 half is because 0 would give us an undefined answer. In this case, it is not undefined. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to go to 4 here. Okay, And I think that's going to be beneficial for us. But let's go ahead and try that. So I'm glad you guys got to see the mistake, so you can see what values you can choose and which ones you can play around with. So I'm putting in zero, and I get negative two over negative three, which is a positive two over three. Okay, so I'm gonna go two thirds here. We're almost past the fractions. Still not there, but just almost there. So a little bit up, I know that's not precise. Um, so now we have, one that we're going to plug in here. So let's plug in one. So we get 
negative 2 over negative 2. Finally, we're out of the fraction territory, and we get the value 1 over 1, or just 1. So we're going to plot that. So 1 comma 1 is a point. We're out of the fraction territory. Now let's plug in 2. So we're going to plug in 2 into our function, and we get negative 2 over 2 minus 3. Well, that's um, a negative 2 over uh, a negative 1. That's a positive 2 over 1, or just 2. So now we're getting more positive. We're increasing at a greater rate. So we get 1, 2, comma, 2. What happens when we put in 3? This is where it gets interesting, and I'm glad we got here. So we plug in 3. 3. And we get negative 2 over 0. That is undefined. Now, what does this mean in terms of graphing? Well, notice how it's going up. It's going to continue to go up. But notice how we can't have a value at 3. So we're going to draw an asymptote on 3. I'm going to move it over. This means it cannot equal this. So anytime you get an undefined value, you go ahead and draw a vertical line. That's going to become your vertical asymptote. Now, as you can see, this was getting close to 0, close to 0, close to 0, and then it shoots up. So it's increasing. But over here to the left, it's getting closer to zero, okay? So that is how you would graph this front part. Now, as you plug in four, we're gonna get to the other side of the asymptote, and you're gonna see that we're gonna start going into the negative direction. So we have negative two over one, and that gives you negative two. Okay, so now we're going back into as I draw my 4, 5, okay, my negative 2, or excuse me, my 4 is negative 2 value right here. And then if I plugged in 5, okay, so we got negative 2 for 4, we would have a negative 1, and we're going back in reverse, okay? So as I plot, this is going to go back this way, and this is what the graph would look like if you were very precise, okay, something like this. Notice how both these lines, one's going to go towards negative infinity. This one goes towards positive infinity. But both lines are avoiding this asymptote, which is x equals 3. Notice how they're also avoiding another asymptote. Okay. Notice how whenever these lines flatten out like this, such as this, you want to see that we have a horizontal asymptote which is the line y equals zero. So your two answers, graph the function, done. Give the equations of its horizontal asymptote, that is this one right here, and the vertical asymptote, and that is that one. And that's how you graph it.